So you got to understand this. Believing in God, there is evidence for it. There is substance for it. When we believe God exists and Christianity, it contains proof and evidence. Atheism, they actually lack evidence, you must understand. They lack evidence. Whereas Christianity, on the other hand, it does contain much evidence. So what we're going to do is that we're first going to look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And then notice at verse 1. Notice what the Word of God says right here. The Bible says, now faith is a substance. So notice that when we have faith, it's not empty. It's substance. It has something in it. The substance of things hoped for, is it without evidence? No, it says right here, the evidence of things not seen. So you'll notice right here that concerning Christianity, our Christian faith, it does contain evidence. It's not empty. It's uh, not like that it is without anything. It contains evidence in the Word of God. It also contains evidence in logical reasoning, but we're going to cover some of that a little later. All right, before I cover some of that stuff, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to explain to you some things how you can defend your Christian faith, which will be important for you. First of all, you got to realize this, is that if the atheist gives a claim that there is no God, you got to realize this. To make a statement like that is a very strong statement. It's a very strong statement to just say there is no God. Because you got to realize that our God is a strong being and all of the creation of the universe rides upon it. So to just discount all of that, you need strong proof of that. But the thing is this, is that a strong claim of no God, it thus requires strong proof to disprove it. There's no God, okay? Give me proof. What are they going to do after that? They can't give you proof. Isn't it amazing how much they demand proof from you? Uh -huh. But they, when they're asked for proof, they don't give you proof. That's good. So this is a strong statement. There's no God. That's quite a strong statement you're making, a strong claim. How many people around the world and even throughout history have believed some sort of God or being? Yeah. This is quite a strong claim and straight statement you're going to be making. That one's going to require strong proof. Strong proof required from a strong statement, strong claim. If you're going to go to court and give a, uh, a normal claim, that's one thing. But if you give a strong claim where society is, revolves around it, and history revolves around it, you're going to have to come up with a lot of strong evidence in front of court. Yeah. Now, you got to realize this. This is something where history rides upon and society rides upon, right? Throughout history and society, they've always believed some sort of God. So you need strong proof for that. you got to realize this is that, but they have no evidence. They can't give you evidence that there is no God. They can't prove it to you scientifically. They can't prove it to you logically. Yeah. They can't prove it to you even observation-wise. Yeah, okay? They can't prove to you that there's no God. Now, the thing is, is that when we say it that way, then they complain and they whine. They complain and whine saying that, well, what you're doing is pretty much impossible because what you're doing is that you can't disprove things that don't exist. That's what they're doing. So what they're doing is that they think that when you give a statement that you have to prove that there's no God, they're saying, well, that's impossible. How can I do that? With something that doesn't exist, I can't prove that. Well, here's the thing. That's a, that's a weak argument, actually. That's just going around the basis. They're just trying to make up an excuse for that. It's not a really good reason. Because you got to realize this. It is true that you can prove things that d don't exist. I can... I'm going to give you these statements, okay? I can prove to you that certain people in our church, such as Stan, Chris, Jack, and Tom, etc., please, online people, don't think they're backsliding, okay? I'm not judging you guys. I'm not judging you. You're not watching me live, so you don't know what's going on, okay? But anyway, so I can prove to you Tom, Stan, and Jack are not in this church service right now. Amen. See that? I can prove that. I can prove to you that Bill Clinton is right now not the U.S. president in the White House right now. 
I can prove to you right now that there are no dinosaurs walking here alive in the city of San Jose right now. I can prove to you that there is no Darth Vader. Okay, so see the thing is this. Yes, you can prove that something doesn't exist. That's just a lame argument. It is not true. You can actually, what you need to do, see, is to search throughout the basis. And by searching throughout the basis, comparing the evidences, then you know that it does not exist. You got to use logical reasoning. You got to use observation skills, etc. Going through all the reasons and evidences to prove it doesn't exist. So don't just give a cop out answer like that, that oh, this is not provable. No, you can prove it. Where's your logic, huh? Where's your science? You got none. You can prove it. See? Here's another thing is that they might whine as well that you can't disprove God. Why? Because you're going to have to do that same thing with Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, they're going to say. To say that, okay, there's no God, and then I'm going to ask you, okay, give me strong proof for that. And then what are they going to do? Well, I can't do that. And then, oh, I win, so that means I, that there is a God. Then they're going to do this on you. Okay, what about, do the same thing right here, okay? There's no Santa Claus. There's no Tooth, par tooth Fairy. Give me proof of that. Can you give me proof of that? Can you give me proof of that? You can. Ha oh, ha, I win. See, that's their reasoning they're going to use on you. They're going to whine you can't disprove God like you can't disprove Santa Claus and you can't disprove the Tooth Fairy if we go by this kind of logic. That's what they're going to argue. However, the easy answer is, is that Hebrews, okay, did you read Hebrews? Okay. Hebrews 11.1, 1, and then we're also going to look at uh, Second P, uh, 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, and look at verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a what? Reason. See? It's logic. It does have logic. Reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Notice that they have a false accusation because at verse 15, there is reason. So here's the thing. How can we prove this is a false accusation? Do we believe this is a false accusation? Amen. 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 This is a false accusation. It's a false claim it's a false claim and guess what it's not even false proof they have no proof that's even worse they don't even have a false proof they have no proof for this here's the thing though with hebrews 11 1 and first peter chapter 3 that we looked at and we read verses uh 15 through 16 Here's how we argue why you can't do that with the Tooth Fairy and why you can't do that with Santa Claus. You know why? Because the thing is, is that Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy does not have proof. See? We're not just doing a cop-out answer where we give them the burden of proving it and that's it. We are doing a fair amount where they have to prove it and we have to prove it too. See? So a strong claim, there is a God. There is no God. Both of them are strong claims. You're going to have to give me proof. Do Christians always give proof for that, for there is a God? Yes, they do. They always argue proof. They use logic. They use science. They use history. They also use, uh, let's see, there's historical proof, logical reasoning, and science yes so based on these three things you know how we do it so I don't know if you learned this before but uh, I'm not gonna go over it through it in this teaching but how we prove God exists with these three is that we use uh, the prerequis prerequisites of logic common sense of how we are created with science we use the laws of thermodynamics and not only that we look at the complications of creation showing that it cannot just be random it had to be intelligent design and then with history, we use historical accounts outside of the Bible that 
people demanded that there was no doubt a resurrected Savior. He died, he was alive. And then you're going to have to go through all the claims right there to see if they're lying or if it's a myth or if it's false. But with history, you can't deny it. These three things prove Christianity. Now, what about you? You don't. There's no God. Okay, prove it. Whenever they demand you for proof all the time, here's the thing. You don't have to give them proof because they're going to critique you. Okay? Why don't you say this? You know what? Um, how about this? You ever thought about proving there's no God? What are your proofs? And when they give the proofs, you can critique them. See, then they're in the burden and you're not. Do you know why atheists, atheists are hard people to talk to? Because you're always in the burden yeah. of proving it, mm -hmm. of using logic, science, and history to explain it away. Mm -hmm. You got to give them that burden. Mm -hmm. And yeah. guess what? They've got none. Yeah. They've got none. They can't prove it. They can't prove it. When they try to, it's easy to critique. Because here's the thing. It's more easier to critique than to prove. Yeah. That's why atheists feel like they get the upper hand because they always have the ease and comfort of critiquing, right. not proving. Christians always held the burden of proving, proving, proving. But here's the thing is that why don't you turn the tables on them and critique them? And, you, and then when you critique them, do you realize this when you weigh the balances of the proofs of atheism and Christianity? What has more proof? This is elevated higher than this one. This thing is down the dumps. Because when we weigh the evidence, it's you can critique this. No matter how strong your evidence is in Christianity, there will always be a way to critique it no matter what. Any scientist, professor, student will honestly admit that. It doesn't matter how strong your evidence is, there will always be a way to critique it. But that's not the reason why we discount Christianity because, oh, there's one critique and there's something. No, you weigh the balances of proofs and critiques. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wh yeah. Who always have the burden of proving, 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 while they're always critiquing, critiquing, critiquing? See, that's why Christianity has way more proof than atheism. See that? Because they've always lived their life critiquing, not proving. Yeah. That's why.